the jury from the perspective that uh, the Crown was giving was a very negative connotation, right? Where when the, the protest was initially started, it was a peaceful protest. It was on a, a relationship aspect of mutual respect for one another between us and the RCMP. Right. And so when they were, now that they were able to see maybe a broader context, it now gives them uh, a different picture of who we are as the Coots blockade or group, right? And I just want to, I guess, reiterate, you know, the reason that we're here today. And, and that's what I want people to remember, you know, what, what was happening in our country and in, in our province at that time and how many people participated that supported that movement. Don't lose sight of that and, and remember that we need your support today yet as well. And so does Rebel News. Uh, thank you guys all for your support. That's for sure. Another day is wrapped up in the trial of the Coots 3. And another day has been dedicated primarily to cross-examination of the Crown's witness, RCMP officer Mark Wilgosh. This is Robert Krejcik here in Lethbridge, Alberta, reporting for Rebel News. The three defendants, Marco Van Hugenboss, Alex Van Herk and George Jansen are all being charged with mischief over $5,000 for their role as demonstrators or protesters in the context of the Coots protest and blockade. And this demonstration was a sort of sister protest alongside the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, Ontario. They occurred at the same time and they both shared broad opposition politically, philosophically, ideologically against what I refer to as the COVID 19 enterprise. They oppose these mandates, lockdowns, edicts, and other sorts of orders issued by government and ancillary institutions, ostensibly in pursuit of public health. Mark Wilgosh's relevance to this trial is that he is an RCMP officer with over 20 years of experience. And during the Coots demonstration, the Coots blockade, he operated as a sort of RCMP liaison with the demonstrators, the protesters. Mark Wilgosh's testimony today continued this theme of what he observed to be a decentralized nature of the protest. He acknowledged that in his capacity as a liaison for the RCMP with these Coots demonstrators, he described the scene as if it was that everyone was in charge. In other words, no clearly identifiable or discernible leadership. The reason this sort of testimony is important is that one of the central claims from the Crown is that the three defendants constituted a leadership council with a degree of control and influence and direction over the protesters. I had a chance to speak with Alex Van Herk and George Jansen at the end of proceedings, and I asked them about their moral, philosophical, and religious convictions that sort of laid a foundation for their demonstration, provided them rationale to do what they did in Coots and continue doing what they're doing in battling this political persecution. Since I'm not from here, what I've come to learn since arriving in Lethbridge and getting to know you guys and some of the other protesters is that there's a pretty large Dutch ethnic cultural aspect to it. A lot of people have surnames that start with Van. And as you were telling me a moment ago, there's also a significant Mennonite aspect. A lot of Mennonites partaking in these demonstrations and sort of part of the freedom movement more broadly. Now, George, maybe you can remark on that. Tell our audience what role these religious or cultural ethnic aspects play in motivating you to do what you did and continue to. Yeah, well, and I think it comes from our bibl biblical background, right? I mean, when you look at how God... Uh, allowed people to make freedom of choice, whether they wanted to do good or do evil. Uh, right from the get-go, we have that, uh, um, that opportunity uh, from birth. And now as we grow up uh, having that biblical background, we also want to continue having that. So the freedom to be able to choose what we want and for everyone, right? Uh, so, but the difference I think though is you know, some may use that to their advantage to do wrong and some to do good, right? And obviously overstepping bounds, which is why we did what we did. I mean, basing it all back to the whole Coots blockade, the, the trucker convoy to Ottawa. I mean, this indirectly is attack on Christianity. And that's what we're fighting. It's not directly, you know, the mandates and everything at that particular time. But as, as we can see, 
with with the mandates and everything that they were imposing upon us at that time, they were attacking Christians. They were putting fences around churches. You know, they were allowing 10 congregants in the church and the airplanes were full. So we knew right away it was a direct attack on Christianity. And that's what made us, I guess, rebel against it because we knew and we seen what the evil was doing. It wasn't about a particular pandemic or, or mandates. It was an attack on Christianity. Thanks. Now, maybe I can ask George you a question about today. This may be relating to um, your defense, if this is okay. Yeah. There was a moment where one of your lawyers, uh, Alan Honor, sort of played a broader clip, uh, brought in the context of a clip that was introduced earlier as an evidentiary exhibit, which was shortened. So he broadened it, provided more context. Why was that important? And what do you think that demonstrates to the jury to see the fuller context of these moments where you're in the saloon and coots and speaking with the, the RCMP officers and other demonstrators? Yeah, well, I mean, it played a huge difference uh, in, in, in appearance, especially for the jury. The jury, from the perspective that uh, the Crown was giving, was a very negative connotation, right? Where when the, the protest was initially started, it was a peaceful protest. It was on a, a relationship aspect of mutual respect for one another between us and the RCMP right. and so when they were now that they were able to see maybe a broader context it now gives them uh, a different picture of who we are as the Coots blockade or group right and I just want to I guess reiterate you know the reason that we're here today and and that's what I want people to remember you know, what, what was happening in our country, in, in our province at that time, and how many people participated that supported that movement, don't lose sight of that and, and remember that we need your support today yet as well. And so does Rebel News. Uh, thank you guys all for your support, that's for sure. We're running three fundraising campaigns in relation to this trial. The first is to help crowdfund the legal defense costs for the defendants. And remember, lawyers are not cheap and they do not work for free. If you visit coots3.com, you can donate to help the defendants pay for their lawyers. And if you do so, you'll be issued a charitable receipt because this fundraiser is being administered by one of our partner organizations, a nonprofit organization known as the Democracy Fund that's committed to protecting your Canadian constitutional rights and freedoms. Now, secondarily, we're also running a fundraising campaign to help pay for the costs of producing this journalism. Primarily, that revolves around me. I'm not from here. I got sent out from Ottawa. So we've got to pay for airfare, rental car, accommodation, food, and other sorts of things. And while it's not the most expensive city in the world to operate, it's still not free. And if you folks value this sort of independent, in the field journalism, and we hope that you do, please visit truckertrials.com and contribute what you can and also stay up to date with our ongoing coverage.